today we're talking about killer serial killers of the 14th, 15th, and 16th centuries. Um, and, uh, yeah. I love history, I love murder. Let's combine the two. Historical murders. Let's go. The first killer we're talking about from the 14th, 15th, or 16th century is Alice Keiteller. Alice Keiteller was born to a wealthy family, Flemish family relatively new to the Kilkenny area of Ireland. She was an only child. She was married to her first husband, a merchant and money lender by the name of William Outlaw for about five years. Their son, who carried on his father's name, became mayor of Kilkenny in his mother's business associate for most of her life. Her second husband, Adam LeBlond of Callan, was also a moneylender and was accused of the murder of her first husband, but it was never proven. When they were accused of William Outlaw's murder, she didn't exactly provoke much in the way of sympathy. She was wealthy, and therefore many people envied that. Um, and money lenders, by nature, don't really attract much affection. She was also accused of witchcraft, but in the end, they managed to avoid prosecution. Though Adam escaped execution, he eventually died, likely due to excessive drinking. Or murder. Who knows? But before his death, he signed everything over to William Outlaw, the son, and his mother. Her third husband was a wealthy landowner, and he eventually died as well. Though she did have to sue his son to recover her widow's dower, although she was already very wealthy at the time. She then married a man named Sir John Lepore, and he took sick in 1324, and things looked quite dire for him. His children eventually grew suspicious of Alice Kyteller when they realized that she had taken that she had managed to take away most of their inheritance, and they had gotten together with the children of her previous husbands, and they determined that she had murdered her first three husbands and was attempting to murder her fourth. And not just by poisoning, but through witchcraft as well. <laughs> Alice also turned her first home into an inn, which still stands today. Um, I believe it is called the Kai Teller Inn. Um, and she employed young, attractive women to serve and entertain in the inn as well. And supposedly she did some entertaining of her own. Eh, eh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, the children eventually went to the bishop, who sought to eradicate witchcraft, including Alice's supposed coven of witches. Her charges included sorcery, consulting and making sacrifices to demons, and heresy. The bishop who requested her to be arrested was arrested himself, and when he was released by the Lord Chief Justice John Darcy, they both traveled to Kilkenny from Dublin to examine the results of the investigation and found them to be accurate and ordered Alice and her associates to be arrested. Alice fled Dublin when the bishop had been arrested, or had fled to Dublin when the bishop was arrested, and then uh, fled to England when she heard that uh, she was wanted and subsequently disappeared from history. Um, one of her servants, Petronilla de Meath, was not so for fortunate as she had become Alice's scapegoat and was flogged before being burned at the stake. Poor girl, she was probably innocent. Ouch. Next murderer from the fifteenth or from the fourteenth, fifteenth, or sixteenth century is Gil Dore. Gil Dore was born in fourteen oh four in the larger larger region of Brittany in France and fought in the Hundred Years' War and was the comrade in arms of Joan of Arc. 
and fought in the siege of Orléans. Both Gilderay's parents uh, died in 1415 when Gilde was only 11. His father, Guy de Laval, was killed in a gruesome hunting accident that Gil might have witnessed, and his mother, Marie de Crian, died of an unknown cause. After their deaths, he was raised by his maternal grandfather, Jean de Cran, a noted political schemer. Um, the grandfather uh, married him off to Catherine de Thouars of Brittany, a wealthy heiress who greatly increased his fortune. As a young man, Gil Doré was described as impetuous and hot-headed, which translated well to the battlefield. When Joan of Arc appeared on the scene, he was ordered by the Dauphin, which I guess is like a, a king in France, um, to watch over her in battle in 1429. In 1429, he was appointed to the position of Marshal of France, which was um, highest, which is France, France's um, highest military distinction. After Joan was captured by the English and burned at the stake, and the definitive victory of the French over the English in, in 1435, Ray receded from military and public life. In 1440, an argument between de Ray and a cleric at the church of St. Etienne de Mortet um, resulted in his abduction of a priest. The church then lost an, an investigation of Gilles de Ray. Two French clerics, oh, um, church officials and secular lawmen interviewed his body servants who claimed that he raped and murdered over a hundred young children, mainly boys. Two French clerics testified that Gilderé had learned alchemy and demon summoning. His servants admitted to abducting children for him and then watched as he masturbated on and molested young boys before decapitating them. Um, several peasants from neighboring villages also came forward to state that their children had gone missing after begging at his castle. Gil de Ray confessed to the crimes under torture, allegedly saying that when the said children were dead, he kissed them, and those who had the most handsome limbs and heads he held up to admire them, and had their bodies cruelly cut open and took delight at the sight of their inner organs. Experts estimated that he killed between 80 and 20 children, mostly boys. Gilderay's terror finally ended on October 26, 1440, when he was hanged. Like many um, killers in this time period, not much is known about Peter Nier's Nier's Nears, Nears, life, Nears. But he was born sometime in the 15th century in Germany. Peter Nears was a bandit and killer and was one of Germany's most reviled criminals of the 16th century. He raped and pillaged his way through Europe for 15 years. He was believed to have mur murdered over 500 people during his peak murder time and was rumored to have received the gift of invisibility from the devil himself. During his robberies, Niers was arrested in 1577 along with other robbers. After his arrest, he was tortured in Gersh Gershbach. There he confessed to 75 acts of murder, but somehow escaped. Over the next few years, until his final arrest in 1581, a number of pamphlets, ballads, and stories were written and circulated detailing his cannibalism and mastery of the black arts. In a more contemporary account, it suggests that Pierre Nier, Peter Niers was simply a master of disguise. In a circulated warrant from 1579, based on confessions from his captured underlings, when Niers was thought to operate in the Schwarzwald area, it is stated that he frequently changed his appearance and costume. The same warrant also states that he always had a lot of money on him, he carried two loaded pistols in his trousers and a huge two-handed sword. Wouldn't want to meet him down a dark alleyway. Um, Niers arrived at Neumarkt, 
and stayed at an inn called The Bells. A couple of days later, he went to a public bathhouse, leaving his precious bag with magical, with magical materials um, to be kept, kept safe by the innkeeper. Someone at the bathhouse recognized him, and a gradual mumbling and whispering spread across the bathhouse that the stranger might be the killer on the warrants, but Niers was ob oblivious to uh, the change in mood. Two citizens left the bathhouse and went to the inn where they looked in Nier's bag, and it allegedly contained body parts of murdered fetuses. Ooh. Um, he was then confronted by eight men, and he confessed to his identity and the murders. Peter Nier's was tortured and executed over the course of three days in September 1581. There was a list of exactly what um, occurred to Peter Nier's, but I thought I would leave that out of this video. If you want to find it, I'm sure you can. Just look up Peter Nears. Um, yeah. And our last murderer of the video, Peter Stump. Stump. Peter Stump was a German farmer born in the village of, of Eprath and the electorate of Cologne. Excuse me, in the mid 16th century, and lived in a in the rural community of Bedburg, also in the electorate electorate of Cologne. Allegedly, he was called Stump because he had his left hand cut off, and in German Germanic uh, mythological systems, it was held that if a werewolf's left forepaw was cut off, the same injury would appear on the man himself. He was um, thought to be a werewolf, by the way. In the late 16th century, the town of Bedburg, Germany, was terrorized by a diabolical creature that slaughtered cattle, women, and children. The townspeople believed that the culprit was a bloodthirsty werewolf. Some women and children were found horribly mutilated, and others were never found. During this time, during this time, Catholicism and Protestantism were at war for the hearts and minds of the populace, which resulted in invading armies from both fa uh, faiths into Bedburg. This was also the time of uh, outbreak of the Black Plague. The community knew Peter Stump as a pleasant widower who was the father of two adolescent children. Obviously, Peter Stump did not actually turn into a werewolf. But um, he would cloak himself in a wolf's skin, which he claimed the devil had given to him when he was 12 years old. He was responsible for the death of 13 children, two pregnant women, and numerous livestock. The young women among his victims were sexually assaulted before he tore them apart. With the pregnant women, he ripped the fetuses from their wombs and ate their hearts, which he later described as dainty morsels. Small children were strangled, bludgeoned, and the throats ripped out with his bare hands. Um, some were disemboweled and partially eaten. And the lambs and calves, um, the livestock, were ripped apart and eaten raw. Gross. Um, Peter Stump also allegedly had regular sex with his daughter. Incest. Gross. And had sex with a succubus sent to him by the devil. Trial notes and witness statements indicate that the story of Peter Stump's execution in every excruciating detail is true. In 1589, Peter Stump was arrested and formally accused of being a werewolf. Stump was finally put to death on October 31st, 1589 in an extraordinarily violent manner. He was strapped to a wooden wheel and then his limbs were broken with the blunt end of an axe head before he was beheaded and burned on a pyre. Then his daughter and mistress were flayed, strangled, and burned along with Stump as a preventative measure for, for, for further wolfish behavior. Lovely. So if that's all I got for you guys today, uh, let me know in the comment section down below what uh, uh, other murders of the 16th 
15th and 14th century I should look into next and do a video about. Um, so yeah, comment down below, like, subscribe, click the bell icon to get notified for when I upload new videos, and um, I will...